This video is going to be about the thought process behind how to go about doing this particular job that you see on the screen up here, this little part. Centerline Manufacturing uh, asked me to do the programming on this part for the small Integrex they own. And so that's what I'm going to be doing. And I thought it might be interesting to make a video on, on when I get a model and I look at it and what I decide to do in, in relation to the drawings, dimensions. So that's what this is going to be about. And uh, maybe it'll be helpful to somebody. If you, if you like this kind of video and you want to see more of this, let me know in the comments. And, and if so, I, I might show some programming on the computer for this part. And although I'm not going to be doing the machine work, maybe they'll allow me to do, take some video clips on the machine of the part actually being machine. We'll see how that works out. I just wanted to go through a thought process of what I kind of look at when I have to do something like this. And I'm looking at the drawing of this part. And this here, this diameter here, they're, they're dimensioning as data may. And this face here is data B. So I would like to machine this end of the part just for that reason alone first, because these are my primary datums, and I'd like to establish them first. It's always good if you can do that. But there's some other reasons I, I would like to start with this end of the part. Let me cut a section through here. We can take a look at it and see. I would really like to drill these longer angle holes. There's three of these that go through these um, ears or, or webs or whatever you might say on this thing. And I'd like to drill with the longer drill first because it's it's always better to intersect the hole with a shorter drill if you have the option to do that from this end is, is what I'll do so that I have the shorter more rigid tool making the intersection because of the you know it's a little harder on the and it would be harder on the long tool to do that so that was that would be another reason I'd like to do that there's um, this bore here which on the drawing they're calling out as datum F and it has a half a thousandths tolerance on the diameter and it has to have a good finish. I'm thinking this thing is called a, a, a housing for a five stage turbine. So I'm thinking these are bearing, bearings are going to go in here as well as over here on this bore. And I think this, this has a finish call out on this bore here. So I'm thinking it's some kind of seal is going in this hole here. And this is not as close a tolerance. This, this bore here actually has a, also a half a thousandths tolerance as well as this one. This is some kind of snap ring I think goes in here because of the, you know, the little notch in here to grab it and take it out of there. So, but this datum F has to run true to a thousandth of an inch indicated run out to this datum A over here, which is the OD of the part. And then all of this turning here has to run true to a thousandth of an inch run out to datum F. So it would be good to do all of that in one operation, turning it from this end. So, so I've drawn a little model just so we can talk about this here. I don't really absolutely need this to do the programming in the CAM software, but I just drew it so it would be clear on my explanation here. The, I'm going to do all this turning and I'm going to leave stock on this OD right here, which is data A in this case. I'm going to turn it to this diameter first because we're going to do this milling on the um, face and the OD of the part. And I want to turn that. Sorry for all this noise. We've got an air compressor here, people blowing air hoses. It's kind of hard to make a recording here, get decent sound. So you kind of have to bear with me on that, but um, like I was saying, I want to do this milling before I actually finish this diameter or, or any of these real close tolerances on the bore here. But another reason is I want to turn this OD finish. We're going to finish this taper because these, this ends up being just the webs in the end. And this diameter down here, which isn't really a close tolerance, but I want it all to run very concentric to this data may when it's done so that when we turn the part around 
and we're going to be chucking on here on this data may but just to indicate up close to the chuck you could get this running true right there but you could have an axial run out on the part and in order to make sure that's not happening we, we will be able to indicate down here as well somewhere and if we get this diameter and this diameter running true then we can be sure that this bore which has a, a plus or minus two ten thousandths of an inch tolerance on the diameter but also it has a thousandth of an inch total indicated run out to this data may over here so that's the reason that I want to turn one reason I want to turn this diameter down like this and this is just angling out to the rough stock here so that's the turning operation as it would be and, and we'll also turn in this face groove here on the turning part of it now the the pockets on the OD we're going to rough out these pockets but just rough them and leave stock but the reason for that is is there's going to be a um, a tool to come back from this other side when this is all going to be turned away this on on the um, second side before we do this but these holes here have back spot faces or counter bores in them and then they have to be done from this end so I want to on this side drill these holes so that I have a hole for my back spot face but I also want to have a a surface that's perpendicular to the tool let me um, let me show you that in a section I've, I've actually modeled that tool out which is this and if I select this plane and we can get square to that plane this would be the the back spot facing tool with a pilot on it to pilot on this hole because we're coming very close to the OD of the part here and we, and there's no there's no good way I mean you could go in there maybe with drills and a flat bottom drill and maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll rough these out partially with the drill I don't think so though I think I'm gonna come in here with this piloted counterbore tool and just do it in one shot the material here is a 17.4 pH H1150 stainless steel so it's not too difficult to machine I think I won't have too much trouble with that so I think we're going to do this with the piloted counterbore tool but we want a, a square surface for that tool to start in we don't want this tapered surface the gray is the actual part here in the section to start the tool because it would have a lot of difficulty starting on that angle and that would cause problems with the tool so that's how we're, how we're going to do the spot faces on the back side and the front side here is going to have these pockets in it like this which we're going to machine in there and finish we're going to finish this side we're going to machine that in there and we're going to have the um the counter bore or this whatever you want to call this uh face groove in there with the turning and then we're going to machine these pockets on the face and finish the id of them to a certain depth on the part and then we're going to rough in this this back um this back shape here I, sometimes I find it easy to draw these simpler shapes of the model so that that um, we're not dealing with a model like this that's all got complex shapes it's sometimes it's easier to program on the machine if you do that and you're not having to deal with all the complexities of this shape I mean I'll use this to come in and do the you know the corner radiuses and everything so that's kind of the thought process of starting on this end of the part and why I would start on this end of the part. This other end of the part, these, um, these, these, these three diameters are actually all the same diameter, have a half a thousand to tolerance on them, and uh, they're only calling out a five thousandths total indicated run out to data May for that, but if we've got it all lined up, we'll do that at the same time of course and then this here is a 
two pitch, or I mean a two start ten pitch stub acme thread on here with a blunt start on the on the thread. So that that will have to do as well. And there's three uh, threaded holes here, with, and uh, also these three holes that intersect the angle holes. So that'll be done on the second side as well as these counter bores and finishing out all of this shape up to where we left off from the first side as well as these three little holes that go off at an angle and intersect the bore here. It's the only side I can reach those from here because the tool would hit the, the bore if you're trying to do it from this side. Wow, that took a little longer than I expected. And I hope uh, it was interesting, and if you got this far in the video, I guess you were interested in this subject. But I don't know, you know, do you like these kind of videos? Is it worth me even taking the time? It's, this is an easy video to make, by the way. It's not nearly as complicated as making a video of the machine and all these clips you got to put together and everything and edit. I mean, uh, this kind of video can make it in in like a, an hour you know to make the whole video you just got to um, capture the screenshots and, and uh, do an intro and an exit thing and and it's pretty easy to make them but I don't know if there if anybody will actually watch these clear through except somebody very interested in the subject and hopefully that was of some help to somebody and uh, thanks for watching